Hi, and welcome to another episode of Cafe Chronicles. I'm Steve. I'm Dan. And today we're going to hopefully solve the vacuum leak. Dan's after picking up some new boots. So we got some new guard boots in. As I explained last week, we had some uh, ceiling issues with something that was 40 years old. Wintergreen experiment, partial success. Um, however, you could see when you, and uh, unfortunately I didn't film this for you guys, the brand new boots were completely flat. The ones that were on the bike for the past four decades um, were clearly recessed in uh, from where they need to sit. So you could see the, the ceiling pad that needs to go against that intake manifold was just completely worn out. We're gonna fire up the bike. We're gonna see if that's gonna do the trick. Hopefully we hear what it sounds like on four cylinders. And then um, if we're lucky, we're gonna crack that side case open and see what we're looking at for timing. So let's get stuck in. doesn't seem to be running too happy on four cylinders, uh, as happy as it was on three, but mind you, it's been running on three for a real long time, so that cylinder's gotta wake up a little bit. We know the compression's good, it's just gonna be a tuning issue now, but carbs are all nice, sealed up, everything's getting gas, everything's getting spark. As we start the tuning process, first place we're gonna start, gotta check the timing. So I'm going to shoot uh, a beam of light through this hole here and I don't know if you can pick it up on camera. So there's going to be a, um, a point in there that points towards the stator plate for lack of a better term. That will point towards the indicator that we're looking for. In this case it's going to be the F. We want our static timing through this window at that pointer when our cam lobe here points towards the spot that sticks out of whatever the sensor is. Um, we want that pointer to point to the F mark to know that our static timing is where it needs to be. And that's where it looks like it is. So we're gonna call that a day. We're gonna slap that plate back on. And then we get to move to carbs. So just while the bike's cooling down there, um, I'll kind of tell you what we're doing. We're doing an idle drop. And what the idle drop does, it's a really important part of getting the fuel air mixture right. So what we're doing is we're starting with the fuel air mixture screws set two and a half turns out. That's kind of what the factory manual says, Dan, right? Then from there, we're going, starting with cylinder one, and we start to, um, open up that screw and we should hear a slight RPM increase just in that cylinder and you might on a four-cylinder bike you might not even 
um, see the RPMs overall increase on the first cylinder you do, you might only just be hearing the, 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 the chattering of the cylinder physically increase in speed right and um, so what you're doing is you open that a quarter turn on, on that fuel air mixture screw um, until it gets to a point where you don't hear it increase anymore and then you bring it back a quarter turn to where it was and you move on to the next cylinder and that's what you saw Dan and I doing all the way across by the time you get more to the kind of third or fourth cylinder you might find that the RPM of the bike has risen and the lower the RPM is in idle when you're doing this, the easier it will be to hear and diagnose by ear. Because if you have the bike, you know, excuse the, the uh, sound effects here, but if you have it kind of really purring, it's, you know, it's going so quickly that your brain really can't, you can't really tell which you know, what you're hearing and what you're not. So it's really better to, to really slow down the RPM as much as you can where it will almost cut out. So it's more pronounced than the changes that you make. So what we found, we went to s slow down the idle and we couldn't slow it down anymore. So that's why you saw we found that the actual uh, throttle was a little tight. So we've opened that. So we're hoping that it'll take down the idle a little bit, just as we're as Dan was kind of tweaking a few things. So we're going to continue on now with uh, cylinder three, I think we're on then. We're going to try and get that dialed in onto four and already we can hear a change a nice change starting to, to happen already and that's even before we do a sync so hopefully you guys can hear that too <laughs> Okay, so we have our idle drop done. It's already starting to sound well. Hopefully you guys noticed it. You might notice the exhaust was smoking like crazy. You know, this engine's been sitting for 10 years really, probably, right? Probably. Um, we've had it apart for like a year and a half, or two years, you know? Um, a year and a half at least. Um, and, um, you know, we've been, it's probably has water in it. You know, we've done an oil change on it, but it's, you know, it could have some moisture in there, you know, um, condensation or something. Also, um, you know, we had that vacuum leak, so we were like piling in, <laughs> you know, brake cleaner in there. So, um, but it's starting to sort itself out now and the smoking stopped, which is nice. Smoking's dialed back. It's sounding real good. Yeah, it's getting close. So we're after putting the little manometer Doopy dooby, the manometer. Boop booby do, manometer. <laughs> but we're after putting the like uh, little little like uh, carb sinking tool on here. Vacuum gauges. <laughs> and uh, we're getting them uh, connected up to the vacuum ports um, on the on the four carbs, and uh, we'll have to kind of dial them in. But um, on this set of carbs, they're pretty. They're pretty basic carbs, which is nice, but we have three adjustment screws on there that basically adjust the throttle, you know, and the, the orifice plates on there, and uh, it adjusts how, how they close and open. We did a bench 
config on it, but now it's time to ch to use the manometer. <laughs> the booby dooby, sorry. Um, to uh, to figure out, you know, and tune them in real nice and get them purring. So let's let's see how it goes. <laughs> It's sounding okay, uh, we're getting there. Um, that's all we have time for today, but next week we can finish up syncing up those carbs. It's sounding good already. It's close. You know, we're just a little bit out of time this week, but you know, it's getting real close. The bike was getting real hot there. It's probably what, 30 degrees here today or close yeah, to it? Yeah, it's getting real toasty here in, um, in, in Dan's driveway. Uh, the sun's out, the sun's on it. We don't have a fan. So we're seeing smoke where things are heating up that aren't supposed to heat up. And yeah, I right was, my, my <laughs> balls were really sticking to the side of my leg at one stage. So thanks for tuning in, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next week.